what we'll look at in this lab view tutorial then is how would you make a voltmeter, computerized voltmeter using the lab jack and lab view here as our programming environment. Let's take a look at that. So what I'll do is a voltmeter is sort of a continuously running type of instrument. It's always looking for voltages and always trying to display the results. So what I'll do here is I've got my context sense of help on here so I can see what I, um, some help along the way with some of the lab view um, functions that I'm going to pull down. So what I'll do is I'll just you need to get a while loop going right here because that'll sort of keep my voltmeter running throughout. Looks like this uh, help menu uh, window is getting a little big. Uh, maybe I'll even just close it right now. So there's my while loop right there. And on the stop element right here, I'll go ahead and uh, create a, uh, a control on there again to get this men menu. I right click on it. There's my control to stop. And you can see by putting that stop button in my block diagram here, there's a button that also appeared on my front control panel, or just front panel, which is what I use to control the program or interact with it. So I've got a while loop that'll run there. What I'll do is sort of the process of my voltmeter now. Let's see, I like a really nice display for my voltmeter. So I'll pull down the, under the controls. And by the way, on the front panel, I right-clicked again to bring this up. Here's my numeric panel right here. And there's a whole bunch of options I could choose to represent my voltage. I guess I'll just go sort of with this meter right here because that sort of feels like what a voltmeter is. And I'll make it nice and big here, something like that, so I can see it. Something like that's good. Um, also, I just happen to know that the voltages that are going to come into the, um, the lab jack are, are going to be between 0 and 5. So I'll go ahead and change this 10 here to a 5 so I can use the uh, maximum amount of scale I have available. So rescale all the numbers. It's a bit messy in here with all of the other digits in there, but I'll let you take care of that. You can do some formatting on that. And if I go back to my block diagram, see I have a nice meter panel in here. Again, if I look at the help, which is sort of irritating me earlier, but we're back at it now, if I go and hold my cursor over this meter right here, I can see, well, look at that, no help available. But what I can uh, sort of glean from the information is it looks like the meter here has a single wire input right here. See, there's my little spool of wire right here. And I just happen to know that that number that I pass into this wire will be the one that makes the needle deflect on this front panel meter right here. So we'll just go with that. And what I'm going to go ahead and drag into that then, if I go back to instrument I.O. here, instrument drivers, and lab jack, is I'm going to use my easy analog input again. So if I use that, remember the easy analog input, despite all of these wiring options that it has, that it has in there, I could ignore almost all of them except for this one right here, which reads a voltage and sends it out on that wire right there. You have to be a tad bit careful here because if you look at the lab jack, there are actually eight different analog inputs you can choose from right here. There's AI0, AI1, AI2, and AI3. And if I look very carefully uh, at what I've wired, I'm actually using analog input zero. And that's sort of what the default is over here is this channel right here. If you happen to use a different channel, you'll help have to tell this lab jack VI to use a different channel. But just for emphasis here, I right clicked on that and I'll create a constant right here and see it's actually channel zero right there. So if I look carefully at what it has, it actually knows it's a lab jack and there's several options in there. So see it actually makes a drop down box for me, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That allows me to choose the analog input channel that I'm interested in. And you can see SE stands for single ended and it can handle input of up to uh, between plus and minus 10 volts on there. The 0 through 1 diff and 2 through 3 diff actually creates a differential voltmeter, which you can either uh, ex experiment with yourself or talk to your instructor about. But in essence, it takes two of the channels, subtracts them, and then returns that result. So a differential voltmeter. I'll just stick with a single-ended one right here for this particular application. So actually, believe it or not, I'm, I'm even already done. I'm, and I just, just is to highlight the simplicity of LabVIEW right here. I have my instrument driver right here, which reads a voltage from a given channel. And I'm just going to route it right to the meter. So if I go back to my front panel and just hit run, uh, there's my meter already deflecting. And I have a variable potentiometer connected to the lab deck, which you can't see in this video, but obviously it's reading somewhere around 2.75 volts. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start turning the potentiometer with my hand. So there you go, all the way up to about four and a quarter volts, and all the way back down to about a quarter volt. And see, I've clearly made a nice lab view meter uh, for this application. Let me just continue on just a tab bit here. Let me stop it and just do a couple of more things. One, what I'll do here is maybe I want to know what the number is exactly. So I'll go back. I'll right click in here and choose a different type of numeric control, maybe the numeric indicator right here. And I'll just sort of put that right down here, numeric indicator. And when I go back to my block diagram, I see there's this icon for the numeric indicator. So why don't I go ahead and connect these two like that. So that way, the voltage that comes out of the lab jack will go both to the meter and the numeric indicator so I can actually see the number as well as see it graphically. So see, I'm reading about 1.9 volts there. You can see in that bottom uh, graph right here, this graph, or excuse me, this numeric indicator right here tells me exactly the voltage I have. And if I start turning the knob, you can see I'm 
down to 0.37 or maybe as high as about 4.2 or something like that. Okay, one last thing maybe we'll look at before we end this video here is just to do a little bit of processing based on the, um, based on the voltage that are meeting. So suppose then I go back here into structures and I choose something like this case structure right here, something like that. So what the case structure is about is sort of about making decisions real time as your program executes. So I'll sort of draw a case structure in like this and do the following here. I'm going to drag a condition in here which says the following. I want to see, I want to turn an, an, an indicator light on on my front panel, say if my voltage exceeds two and a half volts. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll choose this Boolean right here. I'll choose a round LED like that and I'll just sort of, sort of put it right here. Now the way these Boolean values work, if you send a true into it, it'll be on. If you send a false into it, it'll be off. And so again, what I'd like to do is have this indicator go on if my input voltage exceeds two and a half volts. You can think of other possibilities or uses for that, but this is just for illustration purposes. So here it is right here. Here's my Boolean value right here. And so what I'll do is I'm going to go back up to my block diagram, diagram here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to look around in an area called comparison right here. Here we go right here. In fact, there's a greater than right here. So the greater than, I'm sort of going to drag this in here. It looks like I'm not going to need this right now, so I sort of chose that by mistake. So let me just get rid of it. But anyway, back to my comparison operator, which is greater than. And you can see what the help is doing right there. It compares the two inputs on X and Y. Those are the inputs on the left side. And if X is greater than Y, it'll send a true out. If X is less than Y, it'll send a false out. So what I'll do, I'll just, again, I'll tap into this voltage coming out of my lab jack and send it right into one of the inputs on the comparison right there. That's my X. And what I wanted to compare it to, again, was 2.5. So I right click on that Y terminal and I'll go down here to create a constant and I'll make the constant 2.5. You can see it's not 25, 2.5 like that. So there's my constant. So you can see this lab view programming going on here. I'm reading a voltage from the lab jack right here. I'm sending it both to a meter and a numeric indicator, but I'm also sending it to a comparison block which says, hey, is this voltage on this wire that comes in greater than 2.5? If it is, this comparison triangle is going to send out a true. And I can route that right into my LED, my indicator on the front panel, just like that. So it's all set. Notice the color of the wire is no longer orange. Orange sort of stands for numeric values in LabVIEW, where the dotted green one stands for Boolean values. So it's sort of a way of keeping track of your data types. And I'm done. Let's run the program, see what it does. So it looks like my LED is on right now because I am greater than 2.5 volts. But if I go ahead and change my potentiometer up, up, it stays on. If I go down, 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 there we go. The LED just switched off, so I'm now below 2.5 volts. As I go up above 2.5 volts again, boom, right there it comes on and down again. So see, I have a nice little lab view program going here. And the important part is, once again, a bit of reflection on this block, block diagram, how simple lab view makes it to talk to instruments that sit on your lab bench by just dragging in an icon which is usually provided by the manufacturer here, I am reading real voltages that can potentially be interfaced to a circuit and even doing a bit of processing. It's very powerful.